Good morning, everyone. Good evening, good afternoon, depending on where you are in the country. Welcome to our forecast for upcoming trade week call with Avoria Prime. My name is Stephen Betterell, your risk manager. <clears throat> My goal every week is to challenge everyone to develop a risk management and trade plan and use the correct, um, not overly risky settings with the demo account first, which we'll show you today. Uh, most importantly, get some experience with the demo account before you go live. So I'm going to do a quick test. If uh, everyone could please just let me know. Yes, you can see my screen and hear me okay. We can proceed with the broadcast. Let me just open up the chat window. Here we go. Okay, good. Okay, so good morning, everyone. Again, my name is Stephen Betterell. Let's go through the risk disclosure, please. I know it gets boring and, and monotonous, but we must do it. <laughs> so trading the foreign exchange market carries high risk and may not be suitable for all investors. So as I always will suggest, please understand that as an organization, Avoria Prime does not have any recommended settings. Those are coming from me. Avoria Prime is not a financial advisory firm. Uh, they basically license software that users can use however they want and at their own risk and discretion. Um, some software does come with default settings, as we'll certainly see with Einstein, Iris, and Alexander um, upon initial setup, but the users have the ability to customize the settings however they want. So, Emporia Prime has nothing to do with a customer's broker account. We do not make recommendations to Forex brokers. There's lots of good firms out there that you can get recommended from the folks that brought you in and either your up or down line. Um, we don't solicit or take investments. We don't recommend um, any other types of software other than the ones that are in our product line, which is growing. And I can tell you, we are looking to accommodate some of the smaller sized accounts with a more broad product line. Uh, please stay tuned on that. We have some excellent stuff I was exposed to that is in beta test this week. Some of it will be going live. Some of it we will be continuing to beta test. Uh, so as always, um, it's important that you guys take a look at all of these calls, especially the one last Saturday was critical. And they're trying to go through a lot of that stuff again. But, you know, please go into the Avoria Prime back office and take a look at that. So without further ado, let's jump over to the next slide. So I gave out my email address last week. Uh, it's S Federal at Avoria Prime. If we do not get to your questions today, uh, please do send me an email. Um, hopefully you have also a chance to go through because I noticed with a lot of questions that we got via email, um, it was very, um, very, a lot of the questions that were being asked of me, they had not gone through uh, the Avoria Prime University basics with the Daisy Duncan's course. It's an excellent course. I've almost made my complete way through it. And I can tell you, there's a lot of stuff that I've learned. So for someone that's been in the business for 25 years, actively trading um, different types of commodities and currencies for the last 18 of those years, there was stuff I still learned in this course. So I would recommend, you know, as always trying to get a few nuggets out of it. It's a great course um, to go through. But, you know, I was put in place by management of this organization. And we've had a sort of a fabulous week of collaboration to make sure we go through and set basic standards for how to run the settings for Alexander and Einstein. Uh, but I will tell you that we have seen some pretty decent data, which we are getting ready to take a little bit of a deeper dive on, um, that will allow us to make some slight adjustments to settings, still keeping it conservative versus going really aggressive, obviously, um, but allow us to maybe try and generate um, some more profit inside smaller accounts. I still think, and it is still of my opinion, that the accounts that are under a thousand dollars, you just, it's going to have a tougher time going really well um, in a small account. I think it's best to certainly start off with a demo as I always talk about, but at the same time, be able to understand everything that's going on. You don't have to do a real deep dive or analyze. We can do a lot for you on these calls and 
you know, obviously linking the account up to an FX blue or my FX book will help tremendously in understanding stats, which I can, they're very easy to read. We'll go through some of that today as well. Uh, but I think that's critical to gaining an understanding because confidence in what one does in investments and an understanding of putting a trade plan together and, and the parameters of risk, you know, once they're exercised and laid out um, is critical to success. Everybody that has been a big time investor out there, as I know many on this call want to become that type of individual, you first must start with step one, um, which is putting a trade and risk plan together. Now, the, the great thing about uh, the broad product depth that this company will eventually have for all account sizes is that it does, in many cases, a lot of the work for you, whereas many of us as educators in the past, we spend an inordinate amount of time teaching people how to manually trade or what I like to call discretionary trading versus something more automated. Okay. So most of the work essentially has been done for you here. So that alone to me provides tremendous value. Even if I didn't have, um, you know, a lot of money in, a, in certainly the, the, the costs to monthly to lease um, the software and be a subscriber, um, it's not cheap, guys, and it's for a reason. Is because there was a lot of development that went into building this software. Um, and heck, if I had to pay those subscription costs each month, I wouldn't have a problem because it's doing most of the work for me. Um, and I, I think we get a bit short-sighted, and I've noticed a lot of people are taking a very myopic stance to investing, looking too short-term, um, and not understanding that this is this is a long game. Okay. You know, getting 1% a week, I feel is fantastic. Maybe some don't because it does not allow them to pay for the software. And, you know, I, I would I would challenge you guys to think more broadly on that and don't get caught too much in tripping over nickels on the way to dollars. I've seen it happen a lot. You know, give the software some time. Um, it is excellent stuff, or I certainly wouldn't be sitting here broadcasting to you if it wasn't and considering looking at the software for trading much larger accounts. So let's go into the agenda today. So I'm going to go through the forecasts and news events. Um, got a couple of changes to that we'll go through. I'm going to talk a little about our Forex contest, which is some really cool stuff. And essentially the Forex contest, I'll show you the two flyers on. We'll want to go through that. We want to give you guys kind of the parameters of the Forex contest. Um, and then we'll jump into maybe any q and I don't have an hour on this call this morning. So... Uh, have a family event I need to attend to. So I really need to kind of try and wrap this call up in no more than about 40 minutes uh, will be our time today. So it essentially gives us about 31 minutes to, to dive in from here. So let me switch over to the other screen. And we will begin. Okay, again, somebody let me know if you're not seeing the Forex Factory screen, which you should be seeing. Um, for those that may not know, we do a filter each week, just uh, this little green button in the upper right-hand corner when they turn off all the orange and yellow events that will allow us to, to view the events related to the currencies that we trade, which is the euro, the Great British Pound, Japanese yen, the New Zealand dollar, new one, and the U.S. dollar. Okay, I want to see all events related to that for the current week. So make sure we're looking for the current week starting tomorrow, the 17th of May. Right. So this is going to be a tricky week. So kind of the how I'm going to approach this um, is looking, I'm okay with having it run, you know, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. The problem with Tuesday morning is that whenever a Federal Reserve chairman, certainly uh, Chairman Powell, um, or any of the other regional governors get into any kind of testifying, um, it opens up all kinds of doors for volatility. Now, I, I don't expect anything um, outlandish to come out of this testimony. You never know the course of path these can take. So especially if they start getting peppered with questions on bailouts, and they make comments like, well, we think there's enough bailouts already and the market doesn't like that. And then currency start going crazy. Um, it's tough. Um, so for anybody out there, uh, what I would probably suggest is that you have the software turned off for news events. I know a lot of you will run the software through all these news events. And 
for those that are comfortable and seeing the data and have been doing this for a long time, maybe this doesn't apply to you. For everybody new, um, I would probably make sure that the software, and I'll go in and show you exactly what we're talking about here. So this is Boria Prime's MT4 platform. You click this little box up in the right-hand corner and open up the settings. So this is set to stop trading for news. Hopefully you can see that. And I've gone outside the settings. I've set it for 45 minutes. You might want to up this to 60. Because I can tell you this testimony is probably going to run it for, I don't know, an hour. Let's double check that. If you ever want to do a deeper dive in these things, you can always click this little box here. Um, yeah, so here's the description right here. So you can see testifying. A lot of times these usually run at least an hour. Sometimes they run all day. Um, so <clears throat> sure, call. I mean, if you guys are into a great performance coming into Tuesday, you know, I'm talking something in the area of 3 4%, you might want to just shut the software off. <clears throat> the problem is it's, it's, it's almost impossible for me to forecast what's going to take place here, Okay. Then into Wednesday morning. So this, this may be one of those weeks where you just want to have the software off. Um, because certainly Thursday, I would not have the software on Thursday. Okay, It's too much headwinds into which we already know are going to be completely rotten numbers. right? Um, but if there's any scares one way or the other, it could send obviously the Forex of most markets into a frenzy. Um, and I can't control that. And no software is good enough to navigate those waters. So it's best to probably be out of them at this point. So I'd say that's kind of just an off the cuff trade plan coming into this week. Um, you know, I'm always going to get uh, a forecast for the upcoming week and it, it may be subject to change, you know, and if that is the case, maybe I can have them post something on um, the Avoria Prime's uh, main corporate telegram channel. And by the way, I noticed um, it doesn't seem like we we need everybody to subscribe. If you don't have Telegram downloaded, it's actually a killer app. Um, it's like 400 million people worldwide use Telegram. It really has emerged as a top app. And if you're not using it, I highly suggest it. Um, at the very least, you can download it to your phone. Um, and by the way, the Q&A window, which is popping up with questions, good. Keep them coming. Can't say I'm going to get to them all today. That's why I have my email address. You don't shoot stuff to me in an email. All right. Um, what else do I want to make comments on? Yeah, we'll just leave the plan at that. Stay tuned to the corporate channel in case something changes on that front. I just, I don't like um, the landmines that have to be navigated through starting um, Tuesday morning. I just don't like it. So I guess hopefully people are coming into a, a profitable Sunday and Monday. But again, guys, you know, there's been weeks in the past of a year of data we've looked at as software where it hasn't made any money at all. So don't, <laughs> it's been down. Um, I mean, don't let your heart be troubled on that. Um, just think long term. All right. So let me show you this contest. I'm getting some questions related to this. Uh, this contest is actually really cool. Go into the first screen here and go for the gold, Forex Games. So open enrollments um, starting yesterday. Uh, competition launches tomorrow, May 17th at the market open, which is a little later in the afternoon on Sunday, depending on your time zone. Um, but there's four opportunities to play. Do keep in mind that um, Iris has a second um opportunity. Whereas with Einstein and Alexander, it only runs for approximately a month. Okay. <clears throat> so looking into, you know, an extra, um, depending on what you're looking to, to earn, we've set parameters for this. This is posted again on the Telegram channel. You go to the parameters that is being set and make some comments on that. Switch over to the other screen here. Actually, you know what? I'm going to jump back to the other one. Let's look at this first. So 
This is the back office contest parameters. Um, so you can see that you need to enter in, um, you know, go into your back office, go to the Forex games in the left hand corner, click to the registration page and enter in either your MyFX book or your FX blue URL for this contest. So essentially means you got to link this up. Okay. I know that linking up um, an FX book can be a bit complicated. One thing I would challenge uh, anybody that has shot a good video on this um, that we can throw some disclaimers up and maybe have people take a look at, email me the link or email the link to if you have the video up on the cloud. That would be great because I'd like to take a look at this because this is confusing. Heck, I even had trouble linking this stuff up. So I decided to link it to FX Blue because I couldn't get it linked um, to my FX book because I had some problems with my username. So if you've experienced that, um, they wouldn't even accept my old username and already linked it up to the account, which was totally annoying. So I actually had to establish a new username, but it still would not let me pull um, from the old account's username into the new one. So maybe somebody's got some insight on that. You can forward me some data to get that cleared up because it's driving me bananas. Because I <clears throat> the FX Blue is good, but it does not do a deep enough dive as far as data that the FX book does, in my opinion. So just a side note. <clears throat> So put in the URL, depending on the software you're using, you, know, you can use any of the three, Iris, Alexander, or Einstein, agree to the terms, okay? And the key thing down here at the bottom is agree to use the settings that are all in alliance with what I'm talking about, okay? Also in alliance with what Susan and Catalina are talking about. Um, and I'm going to show those to you on the next slide. So let me switch over to that. The reason we put some settings in, and I sort of threw this together at the last minute, so maybe it becomes somewhat confusing, but essentially for uh, demo accounts only, okay, if you're confused as to setting any of this up, um, before I let you guys go into q and I'm going to show you the MyFX book um, link where it's a position size calculator. This is actually a really good tool here, okay? So the position size calculator um, can allow you to let me just double check one other one. Okay. The position size calculator will allow you to, to do that just essentially to calculate position size. Normally in any other type of trading whether it be Forex, futures, trading, commodities, ETFs, equities, options, all of that, you know, the vast majority of the position size calculators out there, they don't recommend going to anything larger than about 2% of the account as far as the position size. Why? Because it just allows the account to have a lot of trades that don't work and you're what's called risk of ruin. Um, you have a longer chance. You have a better chance essentially of not blowing the account, right? That's kind of why we set the parameters here. So with Iris, it's 1% to 4% is the range. With Alexander and Einstein, the range is 0 0.01 per 3K all the way up to 0 0.03 per 1K. Okay. So as an example, what you're seeing below is an example um, that we use for an Iris account. Um, getting into just lot sizes and so forth. If you guys want to take a picture of this screen, you can. Maybe we can put in maybe a little bit of easier form to understand than what I just threw together here at the last minute, but uh, maybe I can have one of the directors throw this in the back office as well so we just know what kind of range size are once you click, you know, agree to use these settings. We kind of want you to stay with these parameters. And the reason we're doing this is because um, one, it's fun. Two, you can win some money, which is cool. Um, but also in addition to that, giving you guys a, a, a chance to just do a deeper dive on understanding uh, the, the, vol the volatility that can come with a more aggressive size. It's kind of why we decided to do this for a demo account. And we've also decided to keep within these range, uh, I should say the contest within this range is because we don't want you know anybody coming in and putting on like a a, a 0 0.05, right? Getting outstanding results. They're way with outside the parameters of risk. 
the the the, the only <clears throat> note I will make on this from just a risk management standpoint is that the most successful traders in discretionary or manual trading land are ones that can program themselves to act like a robot, right? Once they see a setup or whatever group of confluence or setups that they're using, whatever their trade base plan is that they just execute, right? You're never going to have a hundred percent certainty in trading, right? There's always going to be a lot of um, all kinds of just risk parameters that are way outside of the box. Um, and you're never going to feel fully comfortable, but the best traders out there, they see the setup, all the risk parameters fit and they execute. So I think one of the cool things about this contest is it can get us in the mode of, you know, here's conservative settings all the way to, Hey, here's an aggressive settings. You know, maybe this is great fun to play around with in a demo account. And I could certainly understand how, uh, it would affect the account from a risk standpoint, but geez, maybe I don't want to do that in the live real um, with a live account in the world, right? So let me just jump back to the other screen. We'll take some Q&A. So this is the back office contest. So while you guys are going through that, I'm going to peel through a few questions here. Okay, so first question from Vincent. Would it be wise to change the Alexander from fixed weekly goal to trailing equity bet? Yes. 2% by Tuesday? Um, yes, I would recommend that. <clears throat> um, now, Mauro, the question that you asked, should we replace JPY with a currency less volatile? Maybe not necessarily. If it's your only currency, the answer would be yes. OK, because as we know, when um, any kind of central bank speaking again has a tendency to be a little more whacked out than a lot of them. Right. Especially recently. Um, so, yes, I probably would do that. Just bring in the euro U.S. dollar. <clears throat> the key thing to keep in mind here, guys, and not to do too much of a deep data dive. But the key thing to keep in mind here is that, um, you know, that there's a lot of. There's a lot of stuff going on inside of Alexander and Einstein. And the software is doing um, thousands of views. It's taking all kinds of different looks inside the market. It's using artificial intelligence. It's, um, you know, it's basically a complex algo that's looking for a whole mess of factors. Okay. And it's taking a lot of um, things into account. And most of what I've noticed is that it's basically saying, Hey, I'm right on this trade. Yes, we're taking some heat. Maybe we're taking some loss, right? But I'm pretty confident this trade's going to play out. The only problem with that statement that the software's making is that how far of a net, how stretched is that rubber band am I willing to cast to be right, right? Because in manual or discretionary trading land, you know, it runs completely counterintuitive to how a manual or discretionary trader is taught, especially the pros out there like I was, and that's to keep risk tight, cut losses quick, let your profits run, right? But there's going to be times where the software is not going to do that. Um, it's going to cast, a it's going to be a bigger stretch, you know, because in, the, in you know, I, I always hesitate to get sort of kind of deep on this stuff. And um, again, this is a plug for a day's day course because she'll bridge <laughs> from some of my, um, Steve speak, right? Fed speaks coming out from me um, to maybe understand the basics. But, you know, almost all um, instruments that trade in the marketplace um, have what's called a reversion back to the mean, meaning that the more stretched out they get from particular averages that they've been doing or, or a trending average, the more they're going to want to snap back to that range. And that, that's just a statistical fact in markets, some are more mean reverting to others, meaning that the rubber band doesn't want to stretch as much. Um, whereas a lot of other markets, something like the yen or Forex in general, um, has a much wider band that can be stretched. And this is why settings and risk analysis is much more critical when you're trading with real money, uh, because that rubber band, in some cases on really whacked out flash crash type days 
can super stretch out way past even the third standard deviation before it snaps back. So the software is essentially saying, hey, I'm going to be right. Um, you know, stick with me, which I know is always difficult to do. So that was a rather long answer <laughs> to some of the questions I see, but um, just a heads up. By the way, thank you for that video, Mario. Appreciate it. So we'll see if we can get something out to everybody that shows how to hook your accounts up to these analysis websites. Um, and remind me before I forget, somebody is, uh, if you want to see that position size calculator, I'll show it to you. Uh, hi, Steve. I've noticed, by the way, great questions coming from Clara. Heads up. It's good stuff. Keep it coming. I've noticed you only filter for red folder events and Forex Factor, but personally also avoid a pair if I see a bunch of yellow folders scheduled. There may be no red, but 10 yellow ones uh, would also cause an increase in possible volatility. Yeah, that's exactly right, right? But the problem is, is the more <clears throat> news events you need to be aware of in either a yellow or an orange category, um, the more you just sort of fill in your head with, ah, should I even have the software on? Should it be off? And, you know, that's why I just stick to the ones that are of the most volatility. But, hey, if you guys want to look at them all, that works. Don't contest defeat the purpose of and jeopardize the whole philosophy of the company and conservative trading. Uh, you know, I, I think the certainly the jury could be out on that. I like contests because what it does is that it gets people engaged. And the key thing with trading is getting engaged. You may find these calls with me boring and, oh, Steve, get to the point. Where are the aggressive settings? And uh, but, but that's not the purpose of this, you know? <laughs> If I did that in meetings with all of my clients out there in investment advisor land here in, in SoCal, um, you know, how would that work out for them, right? They would have taken big hits in the equity portions of their portfolios in the first quarter. I'd look like a poor investment advisor instead of a conservative one, you know? Uh, yeah, thank you for that. Appreciate it. Danta, um, will you please show your settings again? Yes, let's do that. Share. I'll leave the screen up while I go through Q&A. <clears throat> uh, for those of you that are putting comments in about getting connected to FX book this morning, it was very easy. You are better people than I. <laughs> I wish I had that. Um, so forth. Eva. I've been struggling to achieve even 0.5% every week on my 40K account. Um, I run default settings starting with lot size 0.13 and even so I'm manually closing things out on Thursday or Friday morning. Is there anything else that can be tweaked? I would love to get at least a solid 1% weekly I'm using the trailing default at 2%. Eva, can you do me a favor and take a screenshot of your settings, the whole window, um, and email it to me? That way I can take a closer look at what all your settings are. Because even though you may be saying everything's default, um, I want to see a screenshot, please. So hopefully you got my email. Just send it to me. Uh, let's see. David, 0 0.03 per 1K for three pairs. So is 0 0.04 for two pairs in a 1K account also okay? Um, we didn't get into the parameters for the contest, which I'm assuming is what this question is related to. We didn't get into the parameters of um, how many pairs. So I'll leave that up to you. I mean, obviously, you know that if you're adding more pairs to a smaller account, you're taking a much more aggressive stance, especially if there's a JPY in that, right, um, than you would be for just being something more conservative. You know, and I hate saying the euro US dollar is more conservative because everything's aggressive in Forex land, right? But it's just not as aggressive. Uh, nor has it been outside of the Brexit craziness, craziness over the last year. Forex contest lot size range for Alexander and Einstein looks inaccurate to me. Can we review lot size range? So I basically just said 1% to 4% on Iris. Um, contest range is 0 0.01 per 3K. That's the bottom of the range, right? It's, um, all the way up to, you can go as high as 0 0.03 per 1K. 
Does that make sense? I'm not sure how to break it down any more than that. I set up a demo account for the contest for five grand. Should I set up one for just 1,000 or does it matter? I would keep it at five, Debbie, honestly. What's your take on gold? <laughs> so I'm getting this question a lot and, you know, I love all you gold bugs out there. I'm just not a fan of gold. I actually don't even have anything gold. <laughs> um, I'm a big stainless guy. Um, but the here's the problem I have on gold. So gold will have its day in the sun like it had about 10 years ago um, when things were just getting absolutely clobbered in um, financial crisis land, 2008, 9, and 10. Um, gold was rocking, right? And then gold had its day in the past as well. Um, but if you look at gold, you just over the long term, it just really hasn't done that well. I do know that the software has done well trading gold, but I can tell you, I haven't seen any of the data on yet. I'm supposed to be getting the data um, coming up in the next week or so from the developers. So stay tuned on that. Uh, but right now, I would not have this trading gold. I may change that stance once I see the data. It's a 3K for three pairs recommendation based on total equity. 3K for three pairs or just the balance. Um, was the total equity and the balance the same, Ravi? Uh, when will the forecast be uploaded? We always try to get the forecasts uploaded depending on the time for our back office team um, Sunday. So maybe we'll make an extra. Uh, this video is produced and uploaded typically by Sunday morning from my understanding along with my comments. So you'll see that uploaded. There. That is our goal for each week to get all this out before the market starts opening um, later today and Sunday. Is there any data to show reaching goals with one pair like the E? Is there any data to show reaching goals with one pair like the um, I mean, there's data out there um, reaching goals. I'm not sure what you mean by that, but there certainly is some, some adjustments we're going to probably recommend to smaller accounts. Yes, it's going to be a little more aggressive um, to just trade um, the euro US dollar. Stay tuned on that. So, sorry, I missed it. How many minutes before news again, please? Um, <clears throat> let's go back to the screen here. If you're looking at my settings screen, I have it at set at 45. But you can change it to 60. Just double click on it and drop it down. Just like you see me doing right here. Can't say an extra 15 minutes is going to help. Because this particular week is fairly fraught. Um, Wednesday forward with a lot of Fed speak. Or I should say a lot of global banker speak. <clears throat> which can certainly rack and roil up markets. When there are a lot of red folders out there, is it better to trade with fewer currency pairs? You know, I love this question Rick put out. This is great. When there are a lot of red folders out there, is it better to trade with fewer currency pairs, meaning leaving out the ones with lots of red? Yes. <laughs> so, but caveat, the red folders that are related to any kind of central bank speaking and or a huge release of a number like non-farm payrolls in the U.S., right? That's one of the biggest. It's, you know, the first Friday of the month, right at um, 8.30 Eastern time. You know, that's a big one. You always want to stay away from this. This is one of the reasons why Friday just typically doesn't work as far as win rates in any kind of Forex trading, um, especially in an automated type trading environment. So we're getting a lot of questions on the live account. Is it better to set 3% fixed versus trailing? Um, it is a lot more conservative to be, let me just pop that screen up as well. Since I switched my news to 60 minutes. Um, Carrie, if you're looking at my screen, see the trailing equity. You could double click on this and you could switch um, from the fixed weekly goal. Do keep in mind when the fixed weekly goal is selected, like you see here, this first um, line underneath it, the percentage goal comes into play. When the fixed weekly goal is double clicked on, you can switch it to trailing equity. Once that's selected, this fixed weekly goal percentage line below it becomes inoperable. And then the two lines below it become operable. 
two percent as your target triggers triggers turning the software on to start protecting the account right then if it falls back to one percent it'll turn the trading off we are looking to get this adjusted by the way with the developers along with a couple of other changes to allow this to be done at a currency level um, versus a whole account level So when Vince, when you when you switch from trailing equity to a fixed weekly goal, uh, all you have to do is just click the OK button at the bottom, and it should switch it inside the window. Like you notice, I didn't go to a fixed weekly goal. That's why it still says inside this little black window here, not trailing yet. Okay, <clears throat> even if it is trading, which um, the software isn't right now, but when it's market hours are open and it's trailing, <clears throat> once you hit the 2%, you're gonna see these two lines change right here. Current goal percentage and current goal amount um, will change to trailing once you hit your 2% as a trigger. All right, coming up on time here, guys, we got three minutes left. So let's see, Thursday. So, Anthony, this is a good question. Let's say Thursday comes and I'm in drawdown. Should I have close it on Wednesday night and take a loss, or should I should I have it run through Thursday or Friday, regardless of the news? Um, there's not a good answer to this, Anthony. There really isn't, because most of the questions that I get in relation to drawdown is when should I close it out? Um, I can only tell you the evidence I've seen is allowing the um, software you know greater room to do its work to get out of the hole or to get out of drawdown has been exceptionally effective even in the previous versions of beta um, of einstein and alexander before um avoria prime was was, was uh, set up as a company um it always got out of uh, drawdown if this is a big if you had enough money in the account. <laughs> so I, I know that's not the answer everybody wants to hear. And this is why we brought in the, um, the trailing equity protector factor. But it depends on the drawdown. It depends on, there's so many factors to answer this question. So I actually had a good conversation with a gentleman earlier this week. It's trading live money, maybe not getting the performance he wanted out of it, um, which I still think is kind of a myopic view because uh, we were certainly getting more than 1% a week, which I think is great. Um, but I get some of you are frustrated with smaller accounts. You want to see higher returns. This is why we are adjusting. Uh, remember, we employ the factor of Kaizen at this corporation, which is always allowing us to be flexible and change um, into bringing in other settings and some other coaches, um, which you guys will see coming into my presentation over the next few weeks. We'll be bringing in some other experts that have crashed I should say crunched and maybe even crashed to <laughs> have, have crunched tremendous amounts of data. I've done just a fantastic amount of work, way more than the time I have to put into this. Um, so we're going to bring in some of these experts um, to go through and show you as just additional coaches, um, some more aggressive settings on other currencies as well. So please stay tuned and continue to show up each week. You do not have any limitations uh, on Einstein um, in which pairs you can use. Or, or contest which pairs. <clears throat> guys, one thing to note when you guys are typing questions in, read these questions before you click send because <laughs> a lot of them don't make any sense. So, for context, which pair you can use any pair in this contest. Uh, webinar, we've already gone through that. I can explain it out later, I suppose. So, we're looking at the screen. Profit management type is set at trailing equity. Okay. Remember, if it's setting a trailing equity, this line below it, fixed weekly goal, it's inoperable. So, the trailing equity percentage right here, default setting is 2%. As soon as he counts up 2% in a given week, software turns on, starts protecting the account. 1% is the fallback, if you will, that'll trigger shutting it down if it drops from 2% in up performance back down to one. If in fact you haven't dropped back down to one, the software will close out Thursday morning at 10 a.m. 
Eastern time. Here's a good question. What defines the software's performance if two persons use the exact same setting, exactly the same currency pairs, trade for the exact same time, and have the same starting balance? Meaning, why does the other get better results than the other? Do people do something to the settings during the week, e.g. change? I mean, that's possible. But I mean, if all factors in our two trials, you know, it's almost like a clinical trial, right? If the two factors are all the same in our, our test group and our placebo, you should get the same results, right? But there's all kinds of factors, especially when you're trading live accounts, that could affect it. And the biggest one is which Forex broker are you trading with, you know? Are they a good broker? Are they trading against you? You know, B side. Are they 100% A side? You know, mostly interested in just earning commissions. You know, has there been a lot of slippage in the executions? You know, those are all factors that can play into, uh, in addition, to other factors. How good is the VPS, right? How good is the software support um, from its uh, back platform standpoint? Would you adjust these settings for live accounts under 3K? Um, this is about conservative as it gets. So the out-of-the-box stuff um, from you there, Anonymous. Um, so um, we'll just call you Mr. Robinson because I can't pronounce your first name. <laughs> um, this is when will you go over the range multiplier? So I'm seeing, okay, maybe some will disagree with this, but I'm seeing some fairly definitive proof that we should change these two. Okay, I'm seeing, um, but I'm not ready to release those numbers yet or make any change suggestions to the developers as far as out of the box stuff. Um, so I may have an update on that uh, by the end of next week. Stay tuned. Uh, email Jesse is uh, S Vetteral, V E T T O R E L at avoriaprime.com. I would ask that anybody that sends me an email, please. Read it and proofread it before you send it. As you guys will see, I'm a stickler because my mother was an English major. Um, she would always make me write essays <laughs> and it proved excellent in terms of writing it for business later. Um, but, <clears throat> you know, read, uh, go th make sure you go through a day's A's course um, before you send me an email because in many cases, it's your questions will probably be answered. It's great stuff. How do we need an extra license or ISM and demo accounts, please? Um, Tony, I don't know how, what the licensing situation is. I know we've had a lot of subscribers request additional licenses. I don't know where we stand in terms of granting uh, additional licenses and if they can get clarification from management on that. I know a lot have requested that, which is cool. I know they want to provide extra licenses available. Stay tuned. So when you say turn the software up, you mean deselect auto trading? Yes. <clears throat> can you trail with Alexander? How would you trades pop up on getting alerted? Can you trail with Alexander? Um, Adrian, yes. When you suggest shutting off the suffrage, does that somebody close all positions even at a loss? Um, I just turn the live trading off is what I do. See this little button right here? I don't know if you're watching the screen, but you can actually, once, once the, the account's actually live, and up, the auto trading button can be turned off and on here. Just close this, show everybody how this works. See how the button's turned off? It's right here. You can click on, enable, automated trading. You can also just hit control to do this as well. How does time frames mean one of the big effect at times? So right now, Einstein Ian is trading on a daily chart. Um, we may, as the data provides out, um, suggest trading on a smaller time frame, depending on how all this plays out. You seen better success with turning off the software core than these related. I don't have enough data on this, Anonymous. Um, I, I'll, be, I'll probably be able to answer this question about another month. Hi, Steve. Usually running through Wednesday, I achieve more percentage than just 3% uh, days a week. Why not make trading days official until Friday morning? The, the, single per, the, the, the single answer to that is that the win rates on almost all I know there's going to be some manual traders out saying, hey, Steve, you're wrong. Uh, but generally speaking, there is much more rotten or win rates on Thursday and Friday. How's that sound? Keep 
this one this year. I've already gone through that. The sweep is the pass and the county of lot size for a thousand. Um, Tim, can you send me an email on that, please? Because this is kind of confusing. Send an email me on the question you posted here at 1038, please. I finished with 4% profit. Killer. Why would I choose to close out with a loss versus letting the trades flow to the next week? Um, Dylan, the answer is, is because in a lot of cases, the software can pull itself out. Now, watch, I make that statement. Everybody that's in drawdown is like, hey, it didn't pull me out this week. You know, it takes time sometimes, okay? Um, what does trailing equity mean? Thank you, Rick. I appreciate that. Can you increase starting lots? You should increase mess lots lots accordingly. Um, no, 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 no. We don't want to mess with that. So here's the question. <clears throat> See that right here? Don't touch it. Okay. Unless you have millions of dollars and you can afford to mess around with that, I would not touch that until we get further. That would be like a no, no. In case we turn off the image. Um, Demario, I'd let the trades that are on, even if you're in drawdown, play out. Um, cause a lot of times the, the, the software has all different kinds of hedge trades on, um, Okay, we'll take themselves out of my All right, cool. Questions are all over. You guys got my email. It's 1047. I got a roll. Everything will be up and posted in the back office. Um, I feel like Bob Barker. Um, have your pets spayed and neutered. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for joining. Today is Saturday the 16th. Steve Vetteral signing off. I think